Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I've got some bad news for you. I know I, I hate to be the messenger, but I'm I'm just gonna lay it out, tell it like it is, and here it is: the SEC doesn't care about you. <gasps> oh, I know, shocking. Stop the press, right? <laughs> they don't give a damn. They really do not give a damn, and so uh, they've created all sorts of victims. Um, XRP not alive, but sure, what the hell? Throw XRP there. XRP's getting thrown under the bus. You got Ripple, the company. You've got the executives being charged. You've got all of the XRP holders. And this was in no particular order, by the way, just stream of consciousness here. And, and so, as it turns out, uh, and this won't be surprising either, uh, the SEC doesn't just want to uh, victimize XRP holders, they want to destroy everyone's life. That's what it looks like here. Look at this headline from Point Telegram. SEC enforcement actions cost crypto firms and individuals $1.7 billion in penalties. And so uh, anything that you, you own or build, uh, the SEC wants to either take it for themselves or uh, attack it with their hammer. That's, that's pretty much it. There's <sighs> plenty to talk about here, but before I go any further... Um, I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast making YouTube videos all up on the internet, damn it, about Ripple and XRP and crypto. And that's it. That's all that's going on here. Nothing else to see here, folks. Move along. Also, I want to highlight this. Remember that petition I've been talking about? I mentioned at least a couple times on the channel. Uh, well, it's... Uh, it's about to get sent to, to the uh, new SEC chair, Gary Ginzer. So here's a tweet from just a couple days ago from Crypto and Policy, which created this petition. Uh, we have over 17,000 signatures on our petition calling on SEC chair Gary Gensler to end the war on XRP, uh, work with crypto holders on a new regulatory framework, and investigate Clayton and Hinman. It will be delivered on May 14th, four days from today. So from when it is now, as I'm recording this anyway, it's the, thir it's the 13th, right? I think it's the 13th. Yeah, it is the 13th. And so tomorrow it's going to be delivered. Although by the time I upload this, maybe it will technically be the 14th. I'll get it up as quick as I can. Um, and so um, as I record this, there's still time to sign this damn thing, but I, probably by the time I get this uploaded, I'm guessing not. But this is amazing. Think about this. Several days ago, or three days ago, actually. Yeah, just three days ago, 17,000 signatures as I record this, 27,096 and counting, going on up. So uh, a lot of people, that's why I even retweeted uh, th this thing uh, earlier today on, on my Twitter account, just letting people know, hey, it's uh, it's the deadline, so if you want to jump on in, go on ahead here. And so, but, but the cool thing is this actually is going to make it to, uh, to Gary Gensler, where I think that uh, he's going to promptly do nothing about it. That's my guess. I think he's going to absolutely do nothing about it. But I would love to be uh, proven wrong on that. And so uh, now let's talk about how the SEC just wants to ruin everyone's lives. Can we do that? That's going to make for a fun video. Uh, so into the Cointelegraph piece. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission was one of the top regulatory enforcers for cryptocurrency projects in the last seven years, resulting in $1.77 billion in penalties. According to a report released yesterday by Cornerstone Research... The Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, brought 75 enforcement actions against crypto firms and individuals from July 1st, 2013 to December 31st, 2020, mainly involving allegations of fraud or unregistered securities offerings. Many of the actions were litigated in the U.S. District Courts, including the Southern District of New York, while others were resolved within the Commission and Administrative Proceedings both often resulted in financial penalties. And so that's why, I, let me stop here because like a, a little, uh, you know, a ray of hope for us. Statistically, you would expect there to be a settlement between Ripple and the SEC. 95% of the time, literally, uh, the SEC brings charges like this, like what they brought against Ripple. 95% of the time they bring charges, there ends up being a settlement. And so I know that hasn't happened to this point, but also... You know, you had that asshat Jay Clayton. He was on his way out the door, and he clearly didn't care. Like, he really just did not give any of the of the, of the F word. He, he gave zero of the F word. Not, <laughs> he really did not. And so, 
Uh, he was just on his way out the door, and he did what he wanted to do, whether it's for emotional reasons or uh, because of uh, the friends that he has in certain places. Who knows? We can we can only speculate, and there's been no shortage of speculation on this. But he did it, and then he said, Bye, Felicia. Peace out. And then he's just gone. And now uh, we have to deal with the wreckage behind this. You know, that's that's resulted as, as he's left. But... Um, <laughs> Still, I, I think in terms of probability of outcome, at least if you're playing the you know the the odds and and, and that way just looking at it, just like what normally happens, uh, yeah. And on top of that, if you look even at the specifics of this case, well, man, do you think the SEC is going to want to proceed with this after whatever the hell they said, whatever they internally um, uh, you know discussed back and forth to determine that Bitcoin and Ethereum were not securities, but uh, but XRP is. Whatever they decided behind closed doors, and once that's uh, in Ripple's hands, and it's because it's discoverable now, it is discoverable in the case. Uh, is that going to change things? Might we magically just see all of a sudden that uh, the SEC wants to settle? Wouldn't be surprised. So it could be for that reason, or because there's a new, more level-headed SEC chair in, or a mixture of the two. We shall see. But anyway, the piece continues. Of the 75 enforcement actions, the SEC settled 43 cases through litigation and uh, 32 with administrative proceedings. In addition, uh, the regulatory body issued 19 trading suspension orders uh, during the same seven-year period, 11 of which the SEC issued from the second quarter of 2017 to Q1 2018 uh, during the initial coin offering boom. Now, aside from suspension orders, the report states that more than half of the enforcement actions, 39 cases, on alleged unregistered securities offerings were focused on ICOs. Uh, and that, that shouldn't be a surprise. And look, a lot of those were legitimately money grabs. So coming in and and stopping that nonsense, thats I, I think in a general sense, we'd probably tend to agree that that's a good thing. You know, I'm not saying that this should be the Wild West and there should be no regulation, but what I am saying is that the SEC's inaction has resulted in more Wild West action than there otherwise would be. And not even just that. Uh, because they, I mean, they they started moving on the ICO stuff, but perhaps even more important, big picture than that. Actually, certainly more important, big picture than that, is just the fact that all the innovation surrounding what's happening in the world of crypto and blockchain, like you're going to be pushing that outside of the United States. And you know, there are there are bright minds around the world, but there's been a lot of activity in the United States, and it's you're just going to push it outside of the country there, and you're going to slow stuff down because it's more crap that humans have to deal with. So to some degree, you would slow stuff down anyway. So I don't know. I'm just it, it just it's just one of those things that really burns my biscuits, guys. But anyway, since the 1940s, uh, the SEC has used the Howey test to determine whether certain assets qualify as investment contracts and are considered securities. Many consider the SEC's 2017 DAO report, uh, in which it said that digital assets could meet this standard, as one of the most significant moments for crypto regulations in the United States. Cornerstone Research Vice President Abe Chernin hinted that uh, the, the changing landscape in the crypto space, as well as the, uh, the Biden administration, may lead to fewer cases of alleged fraud and instead provide clarity in a regulatory framework for crypto. Yeah, well, one would hope. It's just too too bad that uh, Ripple was one of the early participants, I guess in a sense, at least in this case it's bad, uh, because Ripple is there before all of this uh, clarity that we're hoping for in the future uh, ended up existing. So, you know... Absolutely, I still want regulatory clarity. It's just, it's just unfortunate that uh, Ripple's, Ripple's one of the many that has to suffer through all this nonsense for everybody else to get to enjoy that benefit. It's just too bad, but that, that's that's life. I, I get it. I'm a big boy. I understand this stuff. But anyway, in April, lawmakers confirmed Gary Gensler as the new SEC chair, and Janet Yellen has already assumed the role of Treasury Secretary. And and so look, it's not just uh, Ripple that's been under under tech, but uh, Ripple, uh, they are they have the largest target in crypto that the SEC has ever gone after. This is the biggest non-fraud case that the SEC has ever brought against anyone, crypto or not, in decades. That could not be more clear. And so th this will set precedent. You know, if it once when this is all said and done, like say we don't get regulatory clarity for the entire space, at least XRP, you can't go after Ripple and XRP a second time. So it will have clarity, but it will set additional precedent. And as as <laughs> I'm hoping, at least if there's settlement, um, at least that precedent would be uh, you know in favor of the the side of just 
people building in the crypto space in general, but still you really need to solve the problem by providing sufficient regulatory clarity rather than people not knowing exactly what they're legally allowed to do or what the path forward is and then tiptoeing along and then hoping they don't get sued by the SEC one day. So there we are. That's the world we live in though. So uh, just SEC making a bunch of victims, not caring. It looks like a power grab to me. It looks like a money grab to me. Uh, that's just how I feel. I don't believe, I, I don't feel personally, that the SEC has protected me as an XRP holder. Do you believe that the SEC has protected you as an XRP holder? I mean, that, you could find a humans that believe that, and it is, they're such fringe, like, those are anecdotal incidents. There's like, we can count them on one hand, right? There's almost no human on the planet that thinks that the SEC is protecting them. That, if, if that's an XRP holder. There's just, it, it, it doesn't, ex it effectively doesn't exist. And so there we are. Let me know what you think in the comments section below, but I'll wrap up here. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.